Growing up with pretty strict parents, I wasn't allowed to watch a ton of stuff. The channels in my house were pretty much exclusively Cartoon Network, Disney Channel, or Nickelodeon. And as a kid, that didn't really bother me. During the weekends, my dad would have a lot of TV movies on. He really liked Braveheart and the Green Mile, but at night was when I would get to watch some things that would really interest me. The Simpsons was something my parents both enjoyed, and they'd watch old reruns or new episodes. And some nights when either my sister or I couldn't sleep, they'd let us come out there and watch alongside them. Obviously the show had more mature themes than either of us were used to, as well as some jokes that would fly over our heads, but none of it was ever overly crass. And this part of the reason why I would get confused when they wouldn't let me watch it all the time. It was like a forbidden fruit that I just wanted more of. And ever since those days, I've just been enamored with adult animation. I always begged my parents to let me watch shows like Family Guy or American Dad or just anything, but I was always met with the same answer. The only time I could get a chance to watch something like that would be sneaking into my parents' bedrooms while they were asleep and hoping that Adult Swim would be on. Then I could just sit there and watch Robot Chicken or Aqua Teen Hunger Force or Squidbillies, and you know, I never really understood what was happening, and the intro to Robot Chicken really freaked me out, but I just couldn't help myself. And that's why when the day finally came that they let me watch King of the Hill, I was over the moon. I watched it for as long as I could until it was bedtime or something else came on that I wasn't supposed to watch. I never really understood the show, I was still too young for a lot of the humor, but it's still something that I craved. I feel like all of that is important context as to why I love adult animation and animation on TV in general. It's also important context as to why I'm making this video. It's why I feel like studios need to make more movies like the Bob's Burgers movie. Well, Beavis and Butthead Do America was really the first to do it, I feel like South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut really pioneered the way for more movies like this to even have a chance to exist. It was just a couple years after the show began running that Paramount Pictures released this film theatrically with a budget of $21 million. This was an incredibly ambitious move by Paramount for a few reasons. The first one being South Park wasn't really a household name. Most people knew it as that show with the annoying screaming kids. Some people liked it, and some people loved it, but overall it wasn't top of the line. Second of all, the show was incredibly crude. That's part of the reason people didn't like the show or didn't want to watch it. And because of that reason, the creators wanted the movie to be rated R. And lastly, they wanted the movie to be a musical, which is nothing like the show had been up to that point. With all these pieces lining up, it seemed like the movie was going to be a flop. But with the incredible creative team behind the show, they put something together that was wonderful. I'll admit it, it's been years since I've seen the movie, but from what I remember, it's awesome. The story is outlandish, but it's still charming. The music is catchy and nothing really overstays its welcome. It lives up to the scope that the theater experience should provide, and I love it for that. It made a well-deserved $81.3 million during its theatrical run. It was one of South Park's crowning achievements, and it made people wonder what animated show would be next on this list. I'm a goofy goober! There were some big hitters over the years. The Rugrats movie, which came out before South Park, made $100 million, and even its sequel, Rugrats and Parrots, made $76.51 million. But the next one I really wanted to touch on is the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Now let's get it out of the way. This movie is a certified banger, and it always will be. And part of that is nostalgia talking. This was one of my favorite movies growing up, but it still holds up really well to this day. There's so many funny bits throughout. The opening of SpongeBob's Dream is a great scene to go rewatch because it's not only really funny, but it shows how insane the animation style is. They really went all out and made sure that the animation style is perfect, and even though it's based on a TV show, it feels like you're at the movie theater, supposed to be watching it right there because of how great it is. This movie marked the perfect end to a nearly perfect run of animated television, and after making $140 million on a $30 million budget, it seemed like these type of movies were the way of the future. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case at all. Mysteriously, we didn't get any other animated movies based off of a TV show for years. Maybe it was the lack of interest from the public, but with the numbers from the other films, that's hard to argue. Maybe it was an unwanted risk from distributors. Sure, South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut was very risky for the time, but many of the other films that were making money were all legacy shows. SpongeBob is still running strong to this day, and Rugrats was crazy popular during that time period. 
Also, Disney probably felt comfortable making separate movies from their TV shows. At the time, people were more apt to see a brand new animated Disney movie that they knew would be perfectly crafted for the big screen than going to see something new like a Kim Possible movie. They'll just think, ah, my kid watches that, I don't want to see it. There was also the factor of many animated shows were getting canned at the time. Family Guy was cancelled in 2002 and Futurama was scrapped the next year. It felt that maybe the time for all these movies was in the past. Sure, we had some great ones and some really bad ones, but now we can move forward without them. That was until the behemoth that was. Movie on the big screen. Now when we're talking about all-time legacy shows, The Simpsons is probably number one. It's been running longer than nearly any other show ever. It infected pop culture and changed the landscape of animated shows, period. It was the catalyst for things like Beavis and Butthead, South Park, American Dad, Family Guy, and my favorite program of all time, Futurama, made by the creators of The Simpsons. And with an incredible cast of characters such as Homer, Marge, Maggie, Bart, Lisa, Mr. Burns, Krusty the Clown, Wayland Smithers, Ned Flanders, Milhouse, and the list goes on and on and on, it makes sense why the show is so recognizable to this day and continues to play on Fox. Because of all of these factors and so many more, people had been begging them to pull the trigger on a Simpsons movie, and when the time came and they announced it, it was huge. The film had a budget of $75 million, and it ended up making a worldwide gross of $536.4 million causing it to still be the second highest grossing 2D animated film in history. And yes, while much of this was the waiting for the movie and the notoriety of the characters, this film is also hilarious. It's touching, it's action-packed, and it's gorgeous. They went all out to ensure that this would work, and while you can't please everybody, they did pretty much that. Just like the Spongebob movie, it starts off with a really great itchy and scratchy sequence, which leads into a really funny meta joke. Then you get to see why this movie was made. The intro makes you feel like the town you grew up watching and loving was fully realized. The animation was at the highest point anyone had ever seen for a TV show. It was all you could have asked for. Instantly, the film sets up its story and it never takes its foot off the gas. It has so many memorable moments from Bart skateboarding naked through the streets to Homer driving up the dome wall and something that's been engraved in my brain since the day I saw it. Spider pig does whatever a spider pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't. He's a pig. Look out, he is a spider pig. This movie really is the quality standard for what animated TV show movies should have been, but that was it. After the Simpsons movie, there was a long drought of no movies like it being made. Phineas and Ferb had a couple of movies, but they aired just on TV. Star Wars The Clone Wars had a movie, but it was made before the TV show even began and wasn't very good. Bender's Big Score came out in 2007 and revived Futurama, and well, it's fantastic in every way. It went straight to DVD. There was potential for some shows to get movies. I believe that at the height of Adventure Time or Regular Show, either of those movies would have done insanely well, and Archer was a prime candidate. A spy film with that budget, combined with the writing staff and everything surrounding it, could have been the best of the bunch. Spongebob got a couple of more movies that were received relatively well and made good money, but outside of a part in Sponge Out of Water, it was a completely different animation style. But then, nearly 10 years later, 20th Century Fox had a left field announcement that Bob's Burgers would be getting its own film. Some lucky ducks get all the luck, some break their backs to make a buck. I really enjoy Bob's Burgers. In a way, I've always seen it as a new age king of the hill. So when they announced it was the next show to get a movie, I was definitely confused. There isn't a ton of story they can tell in that world without being too outlandish, and that's never really been the show's personality. So I was very curious to see what way they would take it. And I'm happy to report that this movie is pretty good. I saw it in theaters the week it came out and came up with this video idea at the time. Due to work and life and everything else, it just got pushed away until recently when I saw that it was getting released on streaming. I didn't really see anyone talking about this movie when it was coming out, mostly because the biggest movie of the year, Top Gun Maverick, was competing with it that weekend, but I still haven't heard anyone talking about it now that it's streaming. I really hope to see that change though, because this is a good movie. 
I feel like the first two acts of it are especially great, with the intro song being insanely catchy and setting up each character's motivation and story for the rest of the film. Unfortunately, by the third act, I was pretty much checked out, because there wasn't much more to grab my attention. They set up everything so predictably, and while there are some truly heartfelt and exciting moments, I found myself bored and ready to stop watching. I think part of this comes from the fact that the stakes of this movie are so small. They want you to care about the family and what's happening in their lives, but unlike the three other movies that I've talked about, there's nothing greater or more meaningful. So while this isn't my favorite movie ever, I still liked it a lot, and that goes back to the point that I'm trying to make with this video. I got to see this TV show realized to its greatest potential. There are some seriously cool sequences. You get to go inside areas that aren't possible to make with the budget and time constraints of the show. You get to feel like you're a part of this world, not just watching it for once. These movies add to the world of their shows. It makes everything feel lived in and more exciting. It makes me want to watch more of the show because it reminds me why I like sitting down every week for a new episode in the first place. I just hope that they end up making more of them. Unfortunately, I just don't think that's the reality we're living in. The Bob's Burgers movie made $34.1 million on a $38 million budget. And while part of that is opening against tough competition, bad marketing, or some people not going out to see movies during this COVID era, it still flopped, and while I hope this isn't the end for theatrical movies based on animated TV shows, it seems like it could be. Maybe one day the Simpsons movie too will come out. Maybe with Futurama and King of the Hill getting revivals, they'll get a theatrically released film. Maybe Paramount will decide to put one of South Park's big special episodes up on the big screen. There are so many possibilities that I just hope we get to see one day, because there's a lot of untapped potential, and I love these movies. But for now, I'll just cherish what we have, and hopefully one day those movies will come back.